Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Um, just a couple of announcements today. Um, we have a couple of additions to our prayer list. Um, one is for Nancy's cousin, Fran Jensen. She's um, to have open heart surgery tomorrow. And also for her friend, I think it is, Sharon Wharton, who is um, dealing with cancer. And so if you would add those two to your prayers, uh, we would be grateful. I'm looking out here. Okay. Uh, it is Joel Whaling's birthday today, so I was looking to see if he was here. So if he is not here. But is it anybody else's birthday today? No? <laughs> okay. Okay. Then, I um, wanted to just give you some details. Our, uh, one of our longtime members, uh, Norma Jean Kiesel, or otherwise known Jeannie Kiesel, passed away and her visitation is today uh, from 3 until 8, but the family is going to be here to greet friends and uh, loved ones from 4 to 6. So uh, if you would like to come to the visitation and be able to talk with some of the family, they will be here then. And then funeral services for her will be tomorrow here at the church at 1030 with, um, I believe, the luncheon to follow and then uh, over at the graveside. So um, you are all invited to attend that event. And then we have some upcoming things to tell you about. We have a community worship planned for Labor Day weekend. So on September 4th at 9.30, we're going to have our worship with the Shelby Methodist Church and also the Presbyterian Church here. And then um, we all decided that it sounded like a good idea to have just a potluck brunch. So whatever breakfasty type foods that you like, um, you're welcome to bring those for our potluck after the service. Then, uh, I believe most of you know that Karsten's Farm Days is coming up, and uh, our tradition has been that we worship all of us out at Karsten's Farm at, I believe, 9 a.m. in front of the farmhouse, and there will not be services in this building on that day. And so, if you would just kind of keep that in the back of your mind, that September 11th, no worship services here, but they are over at Karsten's farm. Then the following week after that is our Sunday School Rally Day and we're planning that at 9.30 in the morning and we will be pre-registering kids for Sunday School that day and we're going to have some games and crafts and snacks and um, thinking about a treasure hunt, um, maybe a pirate type of theme and some giant bubbles, so that would be a lot of fun. Um, I'm also looking for some volunteers to help us with our Sunday School this year. Uh, we have lost both of our Sunday School teachers, and so we are looking to um, develop some teams where each team would possibly take a month worth of Sunday School uh, kids and then just teach for that month and then rotate to another uh, team of two. So if you have a friend or a family member or somebody that you could team teach for one month at a time, um, we would love to hear from you. We are in desperate need of Sunday school teachers. And so if you are at all interested or able, I would love to hear from you. And my phone number is on the screen and my email is also there. So those are my announcements today. Are there any others that you want to share? No? Okay. Well, if not, then I'm going to invite you to stand for our confession and forgiveness. We begin our worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Make us to know your ways, O oh Lord, and teach us your paths. Lead us in your truth and teach us, for you are the God of our salvation, for whom we wait. If we say we have fellowship with God while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not live according to the truth. 
But if we walk in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Please take a moment of time for silent reflection and um, thought on your personal relationship with Christ. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out our transgressions, wash us thoroughly from our iniquity, and cleanse us from our sin. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation, and give us with a willing spirit. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. As the word of God proclaims, if any are in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away, Behold, he has become new. All this is from God, who through Christ was reconciled to us, to himself, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is Lift High the Cross. Please remain standing. <laughs>
The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 66, verses 18 through 23. For I know their works and their thoughts, and the time is coming to gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and shall see my glory, and I will set a sign among them. And from them I will send survivors to the nations, to Tarshish, Pul, and Lud, who draw, who draw the bow to Tubal and Jabal, to the cross ones far away, that have not heard my fame or seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the nations, and they shall bring all their, your brothers from all the nations as an offering to the Lord, on horses and in chariots and in litters and on mules and on dromedaries. To my holy mountain, Jerusalem, says the Lord, just as the Israelites bring their grain offering in a clean vessel to the house of the Lord. And some of them also I will take for priests and for Levites, says the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth that I make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your spring offspring and your name remain. From new moon to new moon, and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh shall come to worship before me, declares the Lord. Please read responsibly the Psalm 50, verses 1 through 15. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God will reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame, and around about him a raging storm. He calls, he calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my Lord, of followers, who's, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the righteousness of his cause, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will bear witness against you, for I am God, your God. I do not accuse you because of your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. I will take no bull calf from your stalls, nor he goats out of your pens. For all the beasts of the forest are mine. The birds and thousands upon the hills. I know every bird in the sky, and the creatures of the fields are in, in my sight. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the whole world is mine, and all that is in it. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and make good your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall honor me. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 12, verses uh, 4 through 29. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, 
nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good, that we may share his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. But later, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Strive for peace with everyone, and for the holiness without which what no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many, many become defiled that no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that afterward, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with tears. For you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire, and darkness, and gloom, and a tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further message be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order, endure the order that was given. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear, but you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God and the heavenly Jerusalem and to the innumerable angels in festival gathering and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. So that you do not refuse him who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused him, who warned them on, who warned them on earth, much less will, will we escape if we reject him who warns from heaven. At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised. Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken. That is, things that have been made in order that the things that cannot be shaken may, re may remain. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and let us offer to God acceptable, acceptable worship and reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Here ends the reading.
went on his way through towns and villages teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Lord, will those who are saved be few? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow door, for many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house has risen and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, open to us, then he will answer you, I do not know where you come from. Then you will begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves cast out. And people will come from east and west and north and south, and recline at table in the kingdom of God. And behold, some are last who will be first, and some who are first will be last. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be unto Christ. Amen. Lord, will those who are saved be few? This question is essentially the same one we have all probably asked ourselves at least a thousand times. Am I in? Or, in other words, will I be saved? Instead of Jesus giving us a straightforward yes or no, he offers some advice. He says, strive to enter through the narrow door. What narrow door? What does that even mean? Well, it harkens back to John chapters 10 and 11, where Jesus talks about himself as the good shepherd. There he says, truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. Also, on the night of Jesus' betrayal, he told his disciples that he was going away and that he would prepare a place for them. But Thomas asked, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Then in John chapter 11, Lazarus is dead in the grave for four days when Jesus finally came to Bethany. They speak, Mary and Martha, of the resurrection on the last day, and Jesus tells them, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. This truth about Jesus as the gate, or the narrow door, or the way, is sometimes called the scandal of exclusivity. It is the truth that no one is saved apart from Jesus Christ. And for those that are unwilling to accept that truth, it is hard to hear. We don't want to hear that our Lord and Savior might exclude those whom we love, yet have rejected Jesus. We want him to be free and to be open, but not exclusive. What Jesus says is next, what Jesus says next is even less comforting. He says, for many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. We learned last week that Jesus is not always inclined to speak comforting words, but he does always tell the truth. As you know, sometimes the truth is unsettling or sometimes it even hurts. 
Other times, truth is like music to our ears. How we hear and receive the truth also depends on the one telling it. For example, are, this, are these people trustworthy? Are they knowledgeable? Are they honest and kind? Do they speak the truth in love? Or do they speak with an air of superiority or arrogance, bent on knocking you down a few pegs? The manner of delivery of the truth can make a huge difference in our ability to accept it. Instead of giving us the straight yes or no answer we desire, David Schmidt of Concordia Seminary says, Jesus redirects the question. Rather than talk about others, Jesus wants to talk about you. Instead of discussing whether a few will be saved, Jesus wants to talk about whether you will be saved. He is forthright about the struggles disciples will have. The kingdom is open to all, but not all will embrace it. Jesus answers the question with the encouragement to strive through the narrow door. And then he uses a simple story to help give his answer some context. When once the master of the house has risen and shut the door and you begin to stand outside and to knock at that door saying, Lord, open to us, then he will answer you, I do not know where you come from. And then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you came from. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. These arguments used sound reasonable. We uh, sat in your presence and we ate and we drank with you. You taught in our streets. But spending time with Jesus surely ought to count for something, yet they don't. Here, Dr. Schmidt reminds us, there are many who think that being a Christian is about saying the name of Jesus, being associated with him, eating and drinking in his presence. Merely being in the presence of Jesus, however, does not mean that you are saved. Faith is different from familiarity. Being aware of Jesus, knowing something about Christian teachings, is different than holding on to them for dear life. Friends, are you holding on to Jesus for dear life? Or are you merely assuming that your attendance in church is enough to save you? It's a challenging question. What Jesus reveals here is how discipleship is a lifelong struggle to hold on to Jesus all the while you are battling sin, death, and the devil. And when you can no longer keep moving, when the struggle is too much and the pain is too great, when there is nothing left that you can hold on to, that is when you discover Jesus is holding on to you. I find that to be incredibly powerful and comforting. So often we do try to hold on to these things that get us nowhere. We battle through our own self-will to face these different temptations that we face, whether that be an addiction or um, relationship struggles or different things that you might uh, just be working through on your own power. And somewhere along the line we realize and we come to the knowledge that we can't do it on our own. 
that's when Christ comes in and does his best work. If you are putting your life and your faith and your hope in Jesus Christ, and you are um, baptized into Christ in his death and resurrection, we have an assurance and a hope that no one can take away from us, that Jesus has died and rose again for our forgiveness, our salvation, and our eternal life. Jesus has taken our sin and our suffering and held them close to his heart. He took it with him to the cross. And in his dying and his rising, Jesus overcame the power of those things to damn us to hell. Christ has risen to bring us life that no one can take away. Dr. Schmidt says, life with Jesus will not be easy, but it will be sure. There is nothing that can take you out of this grace and nothing which can overcome his grip. Held in his grip of grace, Jesus greets you. Morning by morning, his mercies are new. Christ offers us today the encouragement that his people, those who will join him in heaven, will come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And it says in the gospel, um, we will recline at the table in the kingdom of God. And behold, some that are last who will be first, and some who are first will be last. There he's talking about the Jews and those who are Pharisees and scribes and think already because they're doing things the correct way or they're doing the, the things right, holding their rituals and their feasts and their fasts and doing all the religious things correctly. They think they're going to be first, but Jesus here tells them those who think they'll be first will be last, and some who think they will be last will be first. And those are the people that are on the fringes. Those are the people that uh, believe that they're too far gone for Christ to come and save them. But here Jesus assures us assures you that if you're trusting in him and believing in him and hoping in him you have nothing to fear you're in you are saved through the power of jesus christ his death and resurrection for you amen we're going to sing a hymn that we haven't sung too many times before and so um I have the words and also the notes on the screen for you, and so um, just do the best you can and enjoy the song. It's a beautiful, beautiful hymn. <clears throat>
the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for all people. Confident in God's compassion and enduring love, let us lift up the needs of the church, the world, and all of creation. Lord God, invigorate the varied ministries in your church and encourage new avenues of praying and proclaiming, nurturing and teaching the good news to all in need of receiving it. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, our prayers. Nourish all the web that connects all of creation and open in us occasions for reflection and rejuvenation. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, our prayers. Intercede where justice and peace are lacking. And raise up wise leaders who will regard the needs of all people. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Assure the restless and those seeking answers. Relieve the suffering of all who need healing. We especially remember today Lois Elders, Joni Eggers, Brian Castor, Larry and Lucy Schlunzig, Fran Jensen, Sharon Wharton, Donna Day, Michelle Jacobson, Bob Toms, Catherine Toms, Mary Eckman, Jason Jewell, Kathleen Petty, and also, Lord, for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, we especially remember the family of Norma Jean Kiesel. Lord, in your mercy. Draw us, Lord, to your heavenly city, prepared for those who have trusted in your promises. And grant us the assurance of all that we hope for in Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. God of mercy, hear the cries of your people and answer us according to your steadfast love. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Just a word of thanksgiving for offerings we received today. Um, our offering plates are there at the... Uh, entrance of the sanctuary, our worship space, and uh, there are options available if you'd like to. You can also give an offering online um, on our website at unitedlutheran.org, or you can also mail in an offering as well. And so we thank you for all gifts received today. Let's pray. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. 
This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together we pray the prayer our Lord Jesus once taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. All are welcome to this table of grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Please come forward.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto eternal life. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this gift of life and this nourishment we receive at your table. Help us, Lord, to use the strength that you give through this nourishment we receive to serve all those in need. We ask this through Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing our closing hymn, which is, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.